Hello everyone. Our main objective is to determine the optimum persistence of a P persistent CSMA CD network for a heavily loaded bus capacity. Let me start with the definition of CSMA. Carrier sends multiple access. CSMA is a probabilistic medium access control MAC protocol in which a node verifies the absence of other traffic before transmitting on a shared transmission medium such as an electric bus or a band of electromagnetic spectrum. Now we will be discussing some of the characteristics of CSMA. CSMA is a protocol which includes the improvements for stations to abort their transmission as soon as they detect a collision. Quickly terminating damage frames uh, saves time and bandwidth. This protocol is widely used on LANs in the MAC sublayer. If two or more stations decide to transmit simultaneously, there will be a collision. Collision can be detected by looking at the power or pulse width of the received signal and comparing it to the transmission signal. After a station decides a collision, it aborts its transmission, waits a random period of time and then tries again, assuming that no other stations have started transmission in the meantime. CSMA has some inefficiency. If a collision has occurred, the channel is unstable until colliding packets has been fully transmitted. So CSMA has two modified protocol versions. The two modified versions are CSMA with collision detection and CSMA with collision avoidance. Our main interest in this experiment is CSMA with collision detection. So we will be going into the details of CSMA CD. As we discussed, CSMA has some inefficiencies. CSMA CD is used to improve CSMA performance by terminating transmission as soon as a collision is detected. Thus, shortening the time required before a retry can be attempted. CSMA CD is widely used for bus topology and in LANs. Coming to the characteristics of CSMA CD, while transmitting, the sender is listening to the medium for collisions. Sender stops transmissions if collisions has occurred reducing channel wastage. Now let us see how a node detects a collision. In a transceiver, a node monitors the media while transmitting. If the observed power is more than the transmitted power of its own signal, as we see in the diagram, it means collision has occurred. And in a hub, if the inputs occurs simultaneously on two ports, it indicates a collision. Hub sends a collision presence signal on all the ports. There are three theoretical versions of CSMA CD protocol. They are one persistent CSMA CD, non persistent CSMA CD, and P persistent CSMA CD. Now let us discuss about one persistent CSMA CD. To avoid ideal channel time, one persistent CSMA CD protocol is used. Station wishing to transmit listens to the medium. If the medium is idle, transmit immediately. If the medium is busy, then continuously listen until the medium becomes idle, then transmit immediately with probability of 1. If two or more stations becomes ready at the same time, collision is guaranteed. Now coming to the non-persistent CSMA CD, a station with frames to be sent should sense the medium. If the medium is idle, then it will be transmitted. Or if the medium is busy, then it will be waiting for a random amount of time. Now talking about the performance of non-persistent CSMA CD, random delays reduces probability of collisions because two stations with data to be transmitted will wait for different amounts of times. But the bandwidth is wasted if waiting time is large because medium will remain idle following end of transmission even if one or more stations have frames to be sent. Now coming to P persistent CSMA CD, this protocol applies to slotted channels. When a station becomes ready to send, it senses the channel. If it is idle, it transmits with a probability of P. With a probability of Q is equal to 1 minus P, it differs until the next slot. If that slot is also idle, it either transmits or differs again with probabilities of P and Q respectively. This process is repeated until either the frame has been transmitted or another station has begun transmitting. In the latter case, it acts as if there had been a collision. That is, it waits a random time and starts again. If the station initially senses the channel busy, it waits until the next slot and applies the sa same above algorithm. Now talking about the performance of P persistent CSMA CD, it reduces the possibility of collisions like non-persistent CSMA CD. 
and also reduces channel idle time like one persistent csmscd now in our experiment the our major focus will be on p persistent csmscd and to determine the optimum persistence of a p persistent csmscd network for a heavily loaded bus capacity we going through the procedure of our experiment and our objective is to determine the optimum persistence of a p persistent csmscd network for a heavily loaded bus capacity for the simulation we will be using netsim software first of all we have to open the netsim then create a scenario and generate traffic for creating the scenario first we have to go to help then netsim help then running simulation via gui then legacy networks then traditional ethernet and then create a scenario i have created the scenario as specified in the experiment manual there are two hubs and 12 nodes we have to drag and drop the two nodes and 12 hubs onto the environment builder we have to input for a sample experiments that is a total of 11 samples which are given below sample 1 in the first sample for each node the persistent properties has to be set as follows the transmission type as broadcast the traffic type as data number of nodes transmitting as 12 the persistence as 1 and the mtu size in bytes as 1500 and data input configuration has to be set as follows this window is obtained when data is selected in traffic type first the packet size in this the distribution should be constant the application data size in byte should be 1472 and the internal arrival time the distribution should be exponential and the mean inter inter Uh, arrival time in mu seconds as thousand, and the hub properties should be common for both hub one and hub two. That is, the data rate in Mbps is ten. The error rate, that is the bit error rate, should be no error. The physical medium should be twisted pair. After the simulation is completed, we have to note down the user level throughput in Mbps value. once the value is noted down we have to vary the vary the persistence from 1 by 1 to 1 by 2 to generate other experiments and we have to note down the values for each of the persistence value so for further ex- experiments we will be varying the persistence value from 1 by 2 to 1 by 12 so for the next 5 minutes in the video we will be varying the persistence values from 1 to 1 by 12 and noting down the throughput values for each value of persistence
output. After simulation of each experiment, click on the network statistics and note down the user level throughput values. Then open an excel sheet and plot a graph for these noted values against their respective persistence values. And thus, we can plot a comparison chart, a performance graph with throughput values on y-axis and persistence from varying from 1 to 1 by 12 on x-axis. As we see, as the number of logged in users is quite large in this experiment, the performance of a p-persistent CSMA CD network with large p is not optimal because of a large number of collisions. Therefore, we have minimum throughput when the persistence was 1 by 2. But as persistence is decreased, lower and lower probabilities, the likelihood of collisions reduce and hence throughput starts to increase. However, beyond a certain limit, in this case 1 by 11, the probability of transmitting packets becomes very low and hence there aren't many transmissions. Therefore, throughput starts to decline. In this experiment with 12 nodes generating traffic, we notice that the maximum throughput is at a persistence value lying between 1 by 9 and 1 by 11. And thus, we have determined the optimum persistence of a P-persistent CSMA-CD network for a heavily loaded bus capacity. Thank you.